This weekend is about uh, how Scotland resources itself, um, including taxation and income tax, and how uh, how the members are going to be deliberating about how taxes are um, distributed across the country to see the kind of country that they want to build. Well, the last couple of weekends has been really, everyone's been in a kind of general state of consensus. I was like, yes, we want Scotland to be sustainable and brilliant and open for everybody. Taxation's a kind of more divisive thing because this is now who's going to pay for that. And there's, there's people here that fit into all the different brackets, so it, could, it was definitely more argumentative than previous. Positively argumentative. Well, I think David and I were delighted to be here uh, today to talk about how public money works uh, in Scotland and the UK. Uh, I started off by talking about how public money works primarily in Scotland, where the money comes from and how it's spent. And I think the key message for me that I would like people to take away is that the way public money works in Scotland has changed really significantly over the last uh, 20 years since the Scottish Parliament was created. We now raise about 50% of the Scottish budget here in Scotland through taxes and that brings a whole different set of questions and decisions and priorities for people in the Scottish Parliament, for Scottish Government and for communities across Scotland. So I was here to talk about Scotland's fiscal accounts, the difference between the taxes raised in Scotland and the money spent in Scotland or on behalf of Scots. So some of the money that's spent on behalf of Scots would be Scotland's contribution, say, to UK international aid. And when you add all the, the taxes together and compare that with the total spend, there's a gap, which we call the fiscal deficit, and that is worth about £12 billion pounds in 2018-19, and it's worth about 7% of GDP. That's a higher deficit than uh, the, the UK government has, and that is currently covered by the UK government. They borrow money on Scotland's behalf. So the question is, if there was a change in the constitutional arrangements, uh, what would be the decisions, what decisions would a Scottish government make to control that deficit? To me, personally, like I never used to know really much about politics before. And I feel that I know a, a great bit, great bit more than what I did know. And I feel that I am able to obviously ask questions and maybe challenge people. Um, and I do feel that we would actually be listened to. We've been given each week, you know, we're given the, the three things that we want to change. So each week we've been given a piece of that puzzle. Um, to learn and to understand and to ask about that leads us down to making decisions at the end and I think we are being given that but we're also for me I'm starting to feel that I'm getting an understanding of really where the politics lies in all these things and that to ask those questions if you yeah. want change I think before there might have been some kind of almost bubble over politics that nobody is able to get in and ask and shake them up and you know, and, and be able to do that. And I think we're able to do that here. And, and I feel quite privileged and quite excited actually and yeah. energised to actually think I want to do that. I wouldn't have done it before, but now I feel I want to do it. But yeah. then I'm also sad because I don't want that to be lost for other people. My role as an economist here wasn't to tell people what they should do with tax, but to really kind of give them sort of tools and evidence to think about what they think the tax system should look like. So think about how their values, so what they want to achieve with tax, uh, but also think about how people respond again. So we do know that people respond to taxes. We know that they respond more to some taxes than others, and, and that can affect how much you can raise. So I wasn't here to say what to do on tax, but really give people some tools to think about what they want to do with tax in the way that's most efficient and meets the needs of Scotland. And actually an audience that I think sat and listened to us and have engaged with us and I'm really looking forward to the question sessions that we have shortly and it would be nice to think how we take out the learning from this session out and beyond because I think a lot of the public institutes, whether it's yours or, or chartered bodies, representative bodies, 
everybody would like folk to know more about tax because you pay quite a lot in and, and, and really I think it, it would be helpful if people knew what they were paying in and why they were paying it in. Uh, there's, there's plenty to think about and it's very interesting when you get there. For us we were talking about the economy and how you can make it much fairer and in particular how the tax system can help to do that. And for us at IPPR Scotland, it's about how, yes, you can raise revenue, yes, how you can redistribute revenue, but also how you can change behaviours through the tax system that make employers do the right thing, that uh, also make uh, people do the right thing. As well as being a powerful tool for raising revenue, though, and making the economy fairer, tax can also be a really important tool for changing behaviour in the economy, both of companies and of individuals. Um, and one of the things we talked about is how tax can be used, for example, uh, towards environmental goods. So we face a climate crisis at the moment, things like a carbon tax, uh, plastic packaging tax or even a meat tax. We also talked about how tax can be used to reduce social harms. So we already have an alcohol tax, tobacco tax. Maybe we should be looking at other things as consumption patterns change that we could use tax for to reduce social harm. And I guess for, for the retail consortium, it was really about looking at how the tax system is set up to produce a fair outcome, but one that's not too high, not too low, that lets businesses thrive, but gives government the resources it needs to survive, as well as not being too complicated for our members. What it pointed out to me was, educationally, our schools are not really addressing from the first come into school, what real life is all about, how you save, how you spend, what the commitments are. Um, make sure that the tax is being fairly distributed, but also looking to see um, how the tax could be re-evaluated because it hasn't been, it's very outdated and it really needs to be looked at and see how we can do it in a different way. Well, I'm the same as Shirley, like there obviously is pros and cons about doing certain things um, and it's not just kind of like a simple process <laughs> um, of just right that's fine we'll just put that tax up and that's it. And I think also for me it was quite key to think about when we have tax how we use it, how are we spending it, what resources you can't have everything. So there's going to be a, like an opportunity cost. If you have a school, maybe you're going to have less nurses, so it's about the balance. I'm starting to look forward to I looked forward to this one because I thought the last one was quite good. Um, this one's actually been better. So I like I look forward to tomorrow first and then the next one. Last night was really good for everybody kind of getting together, letting their hair down and having a good laugh and that's what it was last night, it was really good, you know what I mean? Playing the banjo uh, with a guitar, a steel guitar, a ukulele and an auto harp. Just, oh, just a jam, you know? A few songs, we sing song, we drink. Uh, you know, that, that kind of brought it all together, do you know what I mean? Because we're, uh, we're the people of Scotland, you know? and. I like a bit of crack. Table one, the finding we agreed is important in considering Scotland's finance and tax choice is that council tax system needs to be reviewed with the purpose of making it fairer. Um, so fairness was our key issue. The reason we decided this is because it hasn't been looked at since 1991. If more is brought in from people who can afford it, then we would be able to spend it on local services like um, housing, parks, schools, local communities and put it into the community elsewhere. And it also could release tax burden for households whose properties devalued over the years and are still paying a high tax rate. Table three, can everyone see me? No. <laughs> I know that would be difficult, however, I don't have a booster seat. Uh, we feel that tax should be progressive, neutral and a system that spent money in the right places. The findings that we agree is important in considering Scotland's finances and tax choices is to decriminalise some drugs. Right, I'm just going to 
lists some benefits here, which not only include tax generation, but savings across other sectors as well. So, the first one would be savings in the NHS. The second one would be savings in the prison services. For example, the cost of keeping a prisoner in jail. The use of legal aid before that person is put in jail. It would make the country safer for people with addiction and it would also take the power away for, for criminals, drug dealers for example. For the generation of tax, it would, without taking the money away from other places, if you looked at some of the policies of other countries regarding the legislation of cannabis, with the health benefits that's, that that has, um, I just think there's massive scope there and it would also could, um, it could be a, re a reduction for the drug deaths and anything you want to add to that? It's, it's the only tax that we believe that would be not taken away from, you know, personal tax or adding something on. It was the only tax that we were taking that, that could generate some money. So although that does, doesn't just involve the generation of tax, the savings for other sectors as well and the benefits to, to people with addiction, which is an illness, could be quite, quite positive. That's, that's how we felt. Although I know it's a touchy subject and I wasn't very confident about speaking about it, but here we are. The finding that we agreed is important in considering Scotland's finance and tax choices is to get rid of zero hour contracts and to implement the living wage. The reasons behind it is it would give hope and confidence to the future for, for future generations. It would reduce the number of people who need top up benefits and incentive for people to go into employment and it would also increase income and tax revenue. Um, so our one was that we need education to um, reframe people's mindsets on tax and this might include public participation in tax decisions, education on what uh, money is spent on and how much we need to raise, for so example, um, to maintain the NHS and to prepare people for a new system. Yeah, the reasons why we decided that, that people need to know why it's so important and that it's about morals, values, part of being a citizen. I think we got such a surprise yesterday that nearly 50% of our tax goes on the national health. And population are not aware of that and they were aware of things like that. We can't build a sustainable country without thinking seriously about tax. I actually really, and I, I, I say it's a joke every time, this was my favourite table but this actually was my favourite table there was a lot of there was a lot of disagreement which I enjoy because if everybody agrees it's a bit boring but we we disagreed in a positive manner which was really good and uh, everybody respected everybody else's views and there was even a change of mind with some people which is good not I mean that you can put a point across and people actually taking board what you're saying and uh, no, I really really enjoyed it yeah, it was good because we were able to, you know, we felt comfortable enough to, to challenge each other, which I think, it, you know, it, it, that speaks volumes about um, how we worked as a team. To, And I, I know that I changed my opinion a couple of times um, on, the, on the basis of what other people said and, and showed. And yeah, it was a really good weekend. A lot to take in, but a really good weekend. I think it's good that it's normal people having their say and being able to interact with like, the people like the speakers. I think you need more of this. I think this is a good thing for the country and I think you could get positive things coming through these citizens assembly. So yeah, many more. Um, like like we've kind of made like friends for life now. And that's mm -hmm. just coming from like two complete strangers who live nowhere near each other. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I could feel quite proud that we're able to make these changes. It's quite easy. <laughs> So we are, but I do, I feel that like I know. it's been really something that we can, it's memories that we can share, but we have made changes. Yeah. And we'll keep asking those questions right to the end. I hope it can make a very big difference and I hope we can trust that we're being listened to and some of our thoughts and questions are being taken on board, our suggestions. And I would like to think that we can trust 
the Parliament to listen to us.